Hi and welcome to this quick training video on Boardmaker Online which is now available from Spectrix. So if you're ready to ditch that Boardmaker CD for good but keep using the program that you know and love then maybe Boardmaker Online is for you. Maybe you already have Boardmaker Online and you just want a little bit of extra information about how to use it then that's why you've come here today to look at this training video. My name is Amanda Hartman, I'm a speech pathologist and one of the consultants here at Spectronics and yes it is true, I am the self-proclaimed queen of Boardmaker around here so it's my job to welcome you and say good day here from Australia and bring to you this series of quick videos that can tell you a little bit more about Boardmaker Online. So these training videos will cover a variety of topics so enjoy! In this training video we are going to look at how we find and then even edit activities that we find in the Boardmaker community and this is a really handy tool because quite often there are fantastic resources that are being developed by other Boardmaker users and um, we can easily add them to our own activities in Boardmaker Online and edit them to suit our kids or our classroom that we're working in. So let's go over to Boardmaker Online and see how it looks. Okay, so here I am on Boardmaker Online, and if you remember from our video about the menu structure, um, to find activities that are a part of the online community, I can do it here from my opening dashboard, Find Activities, but I can also access it from this Activities tab here, where I can simply select Community Activities. And by clicking on I in either of those places, it takes me to a page that allows me to find activities and boards. And of course, everything is um, searchable on here. So there's a whole lot of things, I mean immediately you can go in and you can see what recent things have been uploaded by other people. Um, so if you wanted a social story when I'm angry, you wanted to have a look at that, um, you can see what latest things have been going up. There is lots of stuff going up there quite often. There's also trending, so these are the ones where um, other people have been using, have been downloading these. So all I do is I just go up into the top there and say for example I was doing an experiment about whether things sink or float. Um, I just say enter and you can see straight away there are some activities. There's 24 different activities that have already been created on a sink and float um, thing. So remember um, just that little tip that if it's a, a piece of paper kind of activity, it's a print activity, versus if you see the little interactive activity there. Now every now and then you'll come across one, doesn't look like we have one in this unit, um, but let's, let's do, let's, sorry, let's do a different search now though, because I want to show you another icon that sometimes comes up. So if I write in CVC words, okay. So you can see here now the activity. So I've typed in, I'm, I'm doing some I'm spelling or writing on consonant, vowel, consonant words. And you can see here I've got some things. So you, again, that little um, computer screen means that it's an interactive on-screen activity. However, we've now got this one that has a little P on it. And if it has a P on it, it means that it has, it, well, I call it performance. It just means that, um, that it will take marks, it'll take scores as the child is doing the activity to keep data about how the child performed. So it's called performance enabled and this is how we can keep data about our students progress. Okay so let's have a look at one of these activities now and let's maybe have a look at one of these performance enhanced enabled ones. So you can see I've got consonant vowel consonant word flashcards and it's practicing reading sounding out consonant vowel words which sounds like a great activity for my group. So I've got a few options here. Um, the first option is if I add it to my activity. So if I click there that's going to add it to my whole collection of activities that I'm storing on my Boardmaker Online account. Uh, the next button is, is adding it to a group. If I really like this activity and I want to share it within a group, a community that I've, you know, a private group that I've put together. So if I want to add it to my Spectronics group, then I can do that by pushing there. I can also email or share the, the link with someone. And I can also download this activity so I have it onto the hard drive on my computer rather than being stored in an online location. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, yep, I want this activity. I want to use it in my classroom. So I click add to my activities. And that now has added that to my activity set. So when I go over to my board maker and load up my activity set, we'll see it there. But I just wanted to point out to you that once things have been added, I now have more options in this orange bar here. So once I added it, I now have the ability I can play it live that will open it up in another window we can have a look at it I can also right away now start assigning this activity for particular students so I can click and say yeah I really need Jim to have a go at this activity okay so I've assigned it to him I can also um, add it to a playlist and we're going to talk about playlists later again I still can add to group and share but also now after I've added I now have the ability to be able to edit the activity I can still download it and I can also remove it from my activities if I've put it there and then I've looked at it and I've decided I don't really want it on my list of activities anymore. So let's go and see where it's ended up. So I click my board maker. Okay, so here are some of the activities that I have. Um, they're all just sitting right at the top here in my activities that I have have that I have added to my activities from the um, board maker community activities. So let's have a, um, a quick play of one of those activities now. So I just simply push play and it's downloading and loading it now. So basically it's asking see how many words I can make using these letters at the bottom. So I click and drag letters. C. P. You built a word. Cat. Okay, so it's quite a nice activity. Um, you can see that that would um, be quite a useful activity. You built a word. Men. Okay, so it tells me, so I'm good. And let's see what it does if I do P. a non word. Oh, hang on a minute. P. N. Nep. Is not a word. Okay. So this is quite useful. So now, um, now that I have added that, yes, I'll leave that activity. So this was that consonant, vowel, consonant, word builder. Now that that's there, and I quite like that one there, so I will click here and go and assign it and say, yeah, I need Olivia to do that task next time she's on her iPad. So I've assigned that there. So quite a good activity. So as you can see, finding activities in that community um, section is quite useful. If I was looking for, um, say for example, I needed a activity to do with bubbles, I'm a good speech pathologist and I just want an activity that allow me to do um, do some bubble, bubble play or a bubble board or aided language board for bubbles. You can see there's a few here. So I just wanted to point out that when whenever you put something up there you can narrow your results because I've ended up with 55 activities that have bubbles in them. So if I want to narrow it down and say okay I just want ones that are to do with communication then that narrows it down so that I've just got communication boards that um, use bubbles that are about bubbles. Okay, So you can have a look and see what kind of aided language boards or what other things people have done. So um, I can then, if I really like that activity, I can just click add it to my activities and it's now been added over in my board maker in my collection of things. Okay, But I can keep looking and searching through other activities. So here's my bubble search again. Um, if I was looking specifically for bubbles but I wanted it for a de particular device so I can narrow the search by just looking for um, see if there's a, an overlay that's been created so here we go here's a bubbles board that I can use with my GoTalk 9 plus okay or my GoTalk 20 or my text speak so or a super talker okay so you can see so let's go and have a look there we go so it's been made in a GoTalk template and this would allow me to print that out and I can um, laminate it and slide it into use with um, my AAC device like my GoTalk 20. And, and even if, so let's add that now. 
which is easy peasy. Now it's now added. And remember when we added it, because this is a print based activity, I've now got the ability to be able to print that activity, um, play it, assign it, add it to a playlist, to a group, whatever. But I'm interested in now how I go about editing this activity. Okay, so here I am back in my My Board Maker page and I'm looking at my activities. And here are some of the activities that I've downloaded um, from the Board Maker community. So just say, for example, I quite like this Bubbles page here, but I want to make edits to it. I can print it straight away, I can play it, assign it, all those things that we've already talked about. But what I really want to do is I want to edit the activity. So let's click the pencil, which tells us that that's going to let us edit the activity. And um, as you know, when you go into the online editor, it opens up into a different window. And so that's it opening now. I'm going to maximize that out so that it takes up the full screen. So here's the board. There's a few things, obviously, that I might want to do. Um, so let's just select a couple of buttons, like the more and done. And let's just say edit, clear the contents of those because um, we don't use those symbols. So now I can go over to my symbols over here and type more in and I can find a different symbol for more to use onto the page. Now what you'll notice is a couple of things um, I might have to click and drag and resize but you'll also notice that the text is under the bottom so to change that I need to go over to the properties and change the properties for the symbol to make them on the top and in the center and then that's the same as the rest of them and then we can do the same thing again with um, finished finish and done so then I can just choose which symbol for finish that I want and drop it into the cell resize it again if I need to fiddle around with things fiddle 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 if you've been using board maker for a long time you'll know sometimes we like to fiddle if there's anything in here that I don't like say say for example I'm not really keen on the purple background so I can try and select those um, select those buttons that are purple and change them to white so that's just basic ba a basic way or I can change a few things around okay so I've made a few changes to that board now and now I might go ahead and save this page here and when I do save that it wants to save over top of the one that I have so um, so it gives it a new name so that the the one that I've downloaded from the community stands as is and then I just save as this new edited one so I'm going to end up with two bubbles activities but I'll just save one as the bubbles and one as this one from April put the date on it so we know what it is and it's just going to quickly save that page and the changes that I've made to it. Okay so that's done now. Now to get out of this window for me on my MacBook I just need to minimize the window back down and then I've got those uh, the cross tabs to be able to close out of it. So now you can see on my activities list I've still got the bubbles activity that I downloaded from the community as it was originally um, but I've also got my new bubbles activity that I've changed and if I don't need both of them and I don't need the old one that had the you know the, the symbols on it that I didn't want then I just simply click this X and it says remove are you sure yes and it's removed so I don't have doubles ups of things I just have those few activities that I've definitely downloaded to my activities that I want to stay there so you can see how easy it is and once you have an explore in and around this board maker community I think you'll see just how many um, awesome activities there are in there so there's lots of um, can save us a lot of time from wonderful other educators and people around the globe that are uploading their stuff there. So not only should you use, but you should also upload the cool stuff that you've been doing as well up into Boardmaker Online so that other people can access it. Because, you know, sharing is caring. And I think that that helps us all to use Boardmaker and now Boardmaker Online even more efficiently and better. Thanks for watching and I look forward to sharing more about Boardmaker Online with you soon. Bye now.